trick. Uh, and its relation to holomorphic disk. And this should be holomorphic disk with boundary on some Lagrangian uh, fibers of some vibration. So uh, the story, the whole story starts with a work of Gaioto, Moore, and Nasky. So it's uh, two years ago now. So this work is two years ago. Uh, so it's in this work, they propose a general method to construct. So they construct a hyperkähler matrix. on complex integrable systems so they consider general complex integrable systems and consider, construct hyperkähler metrics on this uh, by using the wall crossing formula wall crossing formulas And this, uh, the wall causing formulas discussed by, um, for example, by uh, Nagao yesterday. And there was many, this kind of wall causing formulas we received much attention in the last couple of years. So for example, uh, this uh, discussed by Joyce, Conservative Cyberman, and many other people. So many people have studied this wall causing formulas. <clears throat> but for today, um, I will not talk about the general, this, uh, general construction of the hyperkähler metrics. Instead, I will uh, look at the very special case and the, maybe the simplest example of their construction, which is the agree of a metric. So first of all, I will begin with a brief review of the agree of a metric uh, of the construction. Of the agree of a metric by the GMN method. So first of all, we begin with a an elliptic vibration. So B here is just a disk. Let's say with radius R. So this is an elliptic vibration. Uh, with a type I1 singular fiber over the origin. So by I1 singular fiber, I mean the monodromy around the origin is the very standard one. The monodromy is the 1101 matrix. So as over this fiber is a nodal curve, and over the other point, the fiber is just a torus. And we consider, so to construct the metric, we have to start with some data. So first of all, we consider this um, local system over the smooth locus, B prime. B prime is just B minus the origin. So uh, we consider this lattice family of lattice over this smooth point. 
which is just h upper one of a fiber. <clears throat> now, uh, let's say we take some local sections of this lattice of this of this local system, and we call a local sec two local sections. Uh, gamma E and gamma M and assume that they, they are the basis at each point such that at each point they, they form a basis well the, hey, the name here is um, I, I follow the terminology in the GMM paper because uh, in the physics literature this should be the charges and E and M refer respectively to the electric and magnetic charge. So now in fact the monodromy is given exactly by gamma E is invariant and gamma M is goes to gamma M plus gamma E when you go around the origin one time. Okay, so given such a such local sections, um, we can define angular coordinates on the space M. So this will define locally angular coordinates. <coughs> Say uh, theta E and theta m on, on the space m. So these are circle valued coordinates. So that is because uh, each fiber in fact is just the dual of the lattice tensor with the circle. Because the fiber, each fiber is torus. And so since we have such a monodromy, so, so this one is globally defined. But this one has monodromy, so, so not globally defined. So given this uh, elliptic vibration, this data uh, uh, we, we can naturally have this kind of data. Now, uh, to construct the metric, we still need some other additional data. The first piece, uh, the first additional piece of data is a map from this local system to C, which is a homomorph homomorphism uh, with respect to the addition here. So I would define this map by just defining it at the two basis element. So first of all, for the electric charge, I, this function is given by B. So in fact, this is a function on B. So for each lattice element, it, this, this should be a function on B uh, locally. And then for M, for the electric uh, for the magnetic charge, that is going to be given by B times log B over R minus B. So uh, these functions are chose such that they are somehow compatible with the monodromy on gamma. And in fact, this as a name should be called its central charge. So let's say in the theory of stability conditions. Now, um, given this data, so this, this is some additional data that we need, I can now write down some coordinates. So, so in fact, the construction of the hyperkähler metric is um, by first constructing the twisted space associated to the hyperkähler metric. And 
to construct the twisted space, we want to first construct the complex coordinate. So the twisted space is um, some complex manifold associated to the hypercalar manifold with the metric. And we want to write down the holomorphic coordinates on the twisted space first. So now for Seder in C star, we set the following. So we set chi e semifret Seder. So this should be thought of as a uh, coordinate function on the twisted space. It is exponential of pi over epsilon zeta inverse ze plus zeta ze bar plus i theta e. So remember theta e is just this uh, angular function defined by the local section gamma e and ze is the central charge here. And similarly for the magnetic one, we can define this function. Now the point is that then the two functions, the two coordinate functions, will give us the holomorphic double coordinates on the twisted space. So in fact, we will set uh, omega SF. I, I will explain this uh, SF a moment later. So it will stand for semi-flat. So anyway, I defined the Back omega or, uh, for a certain parameter theta in C star to be this two form, I take chi, uh, chi e d, uh, sf, log it, and take the differential, and then match the similar one for the magnetic charge. So this is a two form uh, on M. And in fact, it is supposed to be, so for each theta, so, so in fact what we are doing is for each theta in C star, that should correspond to a compact structure, J theta on M. And this two form should be a holomorphic two form on M with respect to this compact structure, J theta. So this is the, how uh, one look at the twisted space. Now, uh, this omega and also that family of functions will satisfy all the following three conditions. So first of all, if we look at a space Z, which is nothing but the space M times CP1, So we should uh, look at the theta as a parameter here in CP1. This is a complex manifold. So as I said, uh, this space should parameterize a, the, the space of complex structure on M. And this one has a natural complex structure. And the projection to the second factor is holomorphic. It's a holomorphic map. The second thing is um, the omega, big omega SF defined here is in fact a section. So pi is this map, projection map. Pi pullback of O2 tensor with the relative to form, shift, and also for each fixed theta, omega SF theta is holomorphic sympathetic on M, on M with 
that complex structure. So that should be the fiber of this map. Um, pi inverse of theta. Moreover, in fact, we can define a sigma, which is an involution on this complex manifold. And it is anti-holomorphic. And which covers the anti portal map on CP1. So, starting with this elliptic vibration and that uh, central charge, we can cook up with the coordinates, family of coordinates, chi E or N, chi M. SF, and also this two form, and they will satisfy these three conditions. Now, then we can apply a theorem of Hitchin <coughs> So there is a theorem of Hitchin, uh, and also with two other people. So by this theorem, we know that, uh, in fact, this complex manifold Z is the twisted space of some hyperkilometric So. I will call the metric GSF um, on M. Okay. So, so Hitchin's theorem exactly says that if you have Z uh, pi. Is this always a product or is it just a Q1 In fact, it's always a. Uh, I mean, so topologically, it's always a product. Yeah, so for example, if you look at the projection to the first factor, it's not holomorphic here. So the bracket is never a product. So yeah. OK, so the theorem says that if you have three, these three conditions, then Z must be the twisted space of some hyperkilometric. And using this uh, two form, I call the metric um, GSF. So this is called the semi flat metric on M, because uh, in fact, this metric, if you restrict to the smooth fiber of this vibration, so, so that is the original vibration that we start with, the elliptic vibration, if we restrict this metric to each torus fiber of this, that one will be the fret metric. So that's why it's called a semi fret metric, and that's why we call the coordinate semi fret coordinates. Now, uh, However, there is a problem about this metric. That's so up to this point, any questions? So there is a problem. Uh, is that it is not smooth. Because uh, this function is not globally defined. So the monodromy, so, so gamma E is monodromy invariant. So theta E, uh, Z E, and also this coordinate, this MRF coordinate, chi E is globally defined. But this, is, this one is not. So in fact, the monodromy is given by chi MSF. Um, so there is monodromy. Chi MSF SF will goes to chi M SF times chi E SF. So this is not globally defined. 
and so this metric is not smooth. Now, uh, so the idea of GMN is to correct or to modify the functions chi m s f say there, this family of functions by instanton corrections. according to the Wolkhausen formula. to construct uh, a smooth hyperkähler metric on M. And so the way to construct the metric is just like this. I construct the twisted space first. So to construct the twisted space, I want to write down the holomorphic coordinates on that. But then uh, using this naive construction or some effect construction, I don't get a smooth metric because the coordinate is not well defined globally. So then we have to co correct this uh, holomorphic coordinates. And the key idea in that paper is you are going to correct this coordinates according to the Wolkhausen formula. So, um, so the correction or the modification is as follows. Of course, in this case, uh, everything is very simple because we, don't, we just need to correct one family of functions. The other one, we don't need to correct it because it's already already defined. And that's, and that's exactly why we have an explicit formula for the agree of a metric, but not in other examples. OK, so the correction is done as follows. First of all, I need to um, consider the so-called BPS rates. BPS rays. So these are defined by the following. So in this case, we just have, have uh, two rays, L plus and L minus. They are raised in the zeta plane. So remember, we have this zeta. So we regard zeta to be lying in C, or C star, it doesn't matter. So these two rays will rely on the same plane here, there. So these two rays are exactly um, divine in this way. So you fix some point B. Uh, in the base of M. And then you consider the half ray, which is either parallel to B or opposite to B. So for example, if B is in this direction, then this one is L plus, and this one is L minus. So you consider these two rays. Now, uh, so I want to correct these functions. So let's say uh, the corrected functions, so let's say we have corrected it, and we look back at the requirements of the corrected functions, on, on the corrected functions. So um, let me write this down in, in this half of the port. <coughs> So 
So what we have to do is to correct these functions to a family of functions Then I will just uh, remove the SF, call it chi m uh, zeta, such that the following happens. So um, let me write down the formula first. So I required chi m zeta minus L plus to be chi m zeta plus L plus to be equal to chi m zeta plus L plus times 1 plus chi e zeta. And also chi m zeta plus L minus to be equal to chi m zeta uh, minus L minus 1 plus chi e zeta. So first of all, chi e is just chi e sf because we don't correct it. Now this minus and L plus, this means that um, now we regard these functions. So we look at the parameter zeta and uh, remove zeta. So for example, this one is when zeta. So, so L plus means zeta is approaching L plus. So, for example, chi m zeta minus L plus is here. It means the limit of chi m zeta as zeta approach L plus in the counterclockwise direction. Okay? So this L plus means zeta approaching L plus, and minus means approaching it in the counterclockwise direction. Similarly, chi m zeta are uh, plus L plus means approaching L plus in the clockwise direction. So maybe so similarly here, here is chi m zeta uh, L minus. This is the counterclockwise direction, so this is minus chi m zeta plus L minus. So in a sense, so uh, this requirement, so I, I require the corrected functions to satisfy these two formulas. It is saying that, in fact, this family of functions, as a function of zeta, they are discontinuous. Okay. So they should be continuous. Uh, I have uh, such that there are holomorphic functions in M. Should write down this and satisfy this. And in fact, I have to also impose some asymptotic conditions. So, I, in fact, I need to impose asymptotic conditions on this family of functions as theta goes to zero and infinity. But for today, I would want to focus on these two formulas because um, so I focus on these two formulas and it is exactly the wall causing formula. So any terms of this metric being Kehler-Einstein? Yes, yeah, have a Kehler metric. Uh, okay. So then, after these corrections, then uh, you follow the same procedure. You define omega zeta to be d chi e chi e wedge d chi m chi m, and then uh, again these three conditions are satisfied, and by priming Hitchens theorem, you get a hypergeometric which is now smooth because. Uh, 
we require this to be holomorphic and, uh, functions. And in fact, you can see the smoothness from these two formulas. These two formulas will exactly cancel the monodromy. So before corrections, chi MSF is going to have this monodromy, chi E. And these two formulas will cancel this uh, monodromy. So they are globally defined. Okay. And uh, okay, this is their construction in the case of the agree of a metric. And now, um, what I want to do is to, so uh, let me put it this way. So in fact, uh, people have expected that the agree of a metric is related to counting of holomorphic disks for some time. And here, using this construction, we can see the relation between the agree of a metric and holomorphic disks more directly because we have this wall causing formulas. So originally this appears in many places, but um, in particular it will appear in the construction in mirror symmetry. So so the goal is to understand the relation between uh, these two formulas, star, and holomorphic disk. Yeah, we will consider mirror symmetry now. So, uh, so in, if we understand the, the relation of that with holomorphic disk, then we, we know why Agree of a metric is related to the counting of holomorphic disk. Many of Yes. So, what uh, what's chi n related to chi n plus minus? I will consider the whole family. So, so this depends on theta. I mean, so so this is the limit when theta goes to L plus, let's say. So we this, this is the uh, when you this is somehow like uh, theta goes to uh, I don't know how to write that uh, goes to L plus in the uh, counterclockwise direction. So maybe go to L plus in this way of chi m theta. So that this is a function on m, right? And I require the fun this functions on m to satisfy these two formulas. But that that means that this this function as a function in theta is this discontinuous along these lines. Okay? Okay, so we want to understand the relation between this wall causing formulas and holomorphic disk. And to do that, we come to mirror symmetry. So now I come to SYZ mirror symmetry. For the agree of a metric. So by that I mean, uh, so we fix a fade, uh, a theta a parameter theta. So I let m theta to be the manifold m, and now I equip this with Calabria structures. So a convex structure j theta, uh, a holomorphic two form, uh, omega theta, and also I will let small omega theta to be the Kähler form. <coughs> so this is the Kähler form.
Then I want to um, do mirror symmetry for this space from the XYZ point of view. So, uh, so for the purpose of XYZ mirror symmetry, the first thing that I need to do is to um, to cook up with some special Lagrangian vibration on this space. But in fact, we do we we have one already because uh, either because of this proposition, or if you like, you want, you you can just uh, use the hypercalculus twist. So more precisely, if I fix the parameter theta to be have absolute value one, then uh, so psi is the original elliptic vibration. It is a special Lagrangian vibration. A torus. Torus vibration. So of course you can use the hypercalculus twist. Originally you have elliptic vibration. Twist it, it becomes a special Lagrangian torus vibration. But um, for my purpose, I want to look at uh, from another way. So one way to see this is by the following. So first of all, um, I can see that this map from M theta to C star, it is the, just this coordinate function, chi E theta, so this, this is a holomorphic function with respect to the complex structure J theta, and it takes value in C star. So this is a holomorphic map. Uh, I want to draw a picture of this map. So, so in fact, the image is an annulus. which includes one here. And the fiber, so over one, the fiber is singular. It is, it's just a union of two disks. And over each other, fiber is smooth. It's just a cylinder. So over, other than this point, each fiber is cylinder. And, um, okay, so first of all we have this map. Uh, okay. Now, on the other hand, I have an S1 action on M theta, which is Hamiltonian with respect to this um, Kähler, Kähler form. So uh, it's just mapping theta M. Remember, theta M is the angular function defined by gamma M, the magnetic charge. It's just rotating theta m. And so this is Hamiltonian. It is Hamiltonian. If and only if uh, say the absolute value is 1. So that's why I restrict to this, this case. And now uh, you can compute the moment map. So the moment map is given by this. Moment map is going to give, be given by mu. S1 is just 2 pi over epsilon, the imaginary part of zeta bar b. 
Now, using this map, I can also um, cook up a map. So I, I, I look at this map, chi e. So I am looking at this holomorphic function. I take the absolute value of this holomorphic function and take the log. This will give 2 pi over epsilon imaginary part of theta bar b. Oh, sorry, it's real part. Now, in fact, up to scaling the size, up to the scaling, I mean, of the image, in fact, this psi m theta to b is exactly given by this map. So it's log of chi e theta and also mu s1. Okay? It's because by our computation is just given by this. Now, uh, the special Lagrangian torus vibration can be seen in this way. So you fix a circle downstairs. So, for example, for example, you fix a circle which passed through one. Either it passed through one or not. So, so this is the origin. So you fix a circle with center at the origin. Now, over each point on this circle, uh, this uh, movement map will choose a circle in the fiber. So, for example, I can, I, would, I can choose this circle. At some value, I would choose this circle on this single fiber and choose this circle in this non-single fiber. And now, it, since you have a family of circle over a circle, you get a torus. So this will give a fiber of this map, which is a special Lagrangian torus. Okay. So that is one way to see the map, the, the vibration. Now uh, we have a special Lagrangian vibration. Uh, then we want to use this vibration to look at the mirror. So let me see. So maybe, OK. So now the SYC construction is as follows. Of the mirror. So I have M theta goes to B is a special Lagrangian torus vibration. And SYZ tells you that you should take the dual vibration that will give you the mirror. So the mirror should be, let's say the mirror is uh, denoted by M check of theta. And so in this picture, what is going on is, in fact, there is an open subset in this uh, original manifold that is given by T star of B over the lattice gamma check. So this is the original local system that we start with. And this should be, I think this should be T star B prime. So if you take a smooth locus on B, take a cotangent bundle, this will be an open subset in this M theta. And over this open subset, the dual vibration process is just standard. You take just the two dual torus on each fiber. So this will give, say, an open subset on this side. This will be the tangent bundle of B prime, quotient the lattice gamma. Uh, okay. So in terms of coordinate, it is given as follows. So I mean, what I mean is, uh, so here it is a sympathetic manifold. I, I now regard this side as a sympathetic manifold, and I have the sympathetic or the Dabu coordinates on this, which gives the sympathetic form as a standard form. Then I can transform. In fact, I can just roll down the 
corresponding holomorphic coordinates on this manifold. In the following way, so I need another proposition. That is proposition two. So first of all, I, I need to compute the symplectic coordinates here. And what that means is you compute the symplectic affine coordinates on this B. So in fact, this B will be an, an affine manifold. But in fact, it is with singularity. So I can compute the symplectic affine coordinates. on B. So this is with respect to the sympathetic form that I chose. So with respect to this sympathetic form, small omega theta, and they are given by the following, exactly given by phi 1, is log of chi E minus I theta, and also phi 2 is just log of chi m as f minus i theta. So in fact, it is exactly given by the absolute value of the same matrix coordinates. I mean, also taking the log. But now you are not using the parameter theta. It's you are replacing the theta by minus i zeta. And this is exactly the hypercalic twist that you are doing, in fact. OK, so once you compute the sympathetic affine coordinates on this B, then you can take the complexification of this coordinates and then take the exponential. That will give you the uh, semi flat complex coordinates or semi flat holomorphic coordinates on this space. So, um, so, so this will give you the holomorphic semi fret holomorphic coordinates on the mirror. And as you can see, this is just a um, lot of this uh, semi fret function, so in fact, they're exactly given by this. Uh, the original semi fret coordinates that we talk about, chi e and chi m sf, but now with the parameter minus i theta. Okay, so this suggests that we should identify, so this suggests that, oh, um, not, not yet. So, so maybe mm, put it this way. So, in fact, the mirror is given by M check theta is exactly M of minus i theta. Okay, because it, it is just the mirror is given by the hypercalic twist. But what we get here, so starting from the sympathetic manifold on this side, I go to the alpha manifold with the sympathetic coordinates. Then I go upwards to the mirror. I just get the semi effect coordinates. So as I said, these are not the real coordinates. These not, are not the true coordinates on the mirror. We should correct this, as, I, as we've done before in the construction of the hyperkilometric. We should correct this by this kind of things. So it is a general phenomenon in mirror symmetry, as has been explained by Gross and Siebert. Yeah. So what we need to do uh, is to, as suggested in the works of Gross, Siebert, and also a rule. What we need to do is to look at the uh, holomorphic disk in this vibration. So we, first of all, we have to identify the special Lagrangian fibers 
which we will bound holomorphic disks, and we will also look at the holomorphic disk that they bound, and we will correct the complex coordinates by that kind of holomorphic disk. So here comes the third proposition. So the special Lagrangian torus fiber over this point B. So a fiber will bounce a holomorphic disk. If and only if the real part of this zeta bar B is zero. So that means the wall, so we want to do wall crossing, uh, and now the wall is exactly given by this. So this is the locus of the Lagrangian fibers where they bound holomorphic disk. So uh, the picture is like this. So this is B. This is open. Anyway, uh, so this is a singular point. So we have a singular fiber here. So one of the special Lagrangian is a singular fiber. Now uh, the wall is given by this. And uh, in fact, so more, and moreover, Moreover, um, each such special so Lagrangian torus bounds one family of disk, one family of disk. So maybe put it this way. Uh, so maybe maybe just using this uh, formula to explain that. So in fact, um, these two terms, this both are chi e of zeta, and this exactly will correspond to the holomorphic disk. So this will correspond to the holomorphic disk. Uh, bounded by those Lagrangians. Bounded by the special Lagrangian fibers over the wall. So what I mean is um, so now the corrections of this, so, so, so here, uh, I just get the semi effect coordinates on the mirror by using this naive construction of S by Z. But then I have to correct this coordinates using the holomorphic disk uh, bounded by the Lagrangians over this wall. And in fact, if you fix one fiber, if, if you fix one point here, then above this point, the fiber we just bound one disk. This, this is going to. So, the picture is like this. Over this point, there is a torus fiber, and over this point, it is the, there is the singular fiber. And in fact, each of this torus will just bound one disk. So maybe using white color again. We bound this one disk, and this disk, the um, chi e of, in fact now it is minus i zeta log of it, is exactly the area of the disk, and according to either the program of Gross Siebert or the example study by Aru. We should correct the, we should correct this semi-effect coordinates exactly according to these two formulas. 
So, so these two terms will correspond to the holomorphic disk bounded by this, the special Lagrangian torus fibers. And this is exactly how the constructions of the hyperkähler metric, I mean the agree alpha metric is related to holomorphic disk. So still have several minutes, let me give you several remarks. So this is uh, how we understand the relation between hol uh, holomorphic disk and agree alpha metric. Any questions? Uh, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, this is the formula. So uh, this is the wall causing formula, and in fact, you can regard this wall causing formula as you can you can write this formula in this form. So these are the chi coordinates, and what I said here is the chi coordinates. If you take the um, counter clockwise direction is related to the chi coordinates in the clockwise direction by some transformation here. So the transformation, I, I don't know the standard notations, but uh, in the GMN paper it's called K corresponding to certain gamma. So the gamma here is gamma E. So you can write these two formulas as this single formula. And this K gamma E is a sympathomorphism of the torus that should be the one that appeared in yesterday's talk by Nago. Oh uh, yeah it's by this one. So in fact it's very simple just by maximum principle. So because as I said the so I, I have to use this picture. So from here you can see that a Lagrangian torus will bound a holomorphic disk only, only, in, only when you have the curve in this uh, C star passing through 1 and the disk is exactly given by this one. So only in this case you have holomorphic disk. Otherwise, by the maximum principle, you don't have holomorphic disk. So yeah, I, uh, you need to have some arguments for the proof, but they are all very simple. And this, in fact, this, this is very similar to the example stud studied by Aru in his work. Okay. Now, uh, so I should have uh, a few more minutes. Uh, so let me end by some remarks. So the first remark is, uh, I'm using the terminology of conservative Cyberman. Uh, no, I, I'm using the terminology of GMN. So in the terminology of conservative and Cyberman, um, it is not, uh, it is uh, the wall causing formula here. Here is uh, so-called of the second kind. Okay, so that kind of formula is called a wall causing across wall of second kind. And uh, so, so in fact, here. Um, so in the in this agree alpha case, the wall of first kind, or in the physics terminology that is called the wall of marginal stability, is empty. So we don't have more wall of marginal stability in this case. So in fact, this means that the Corresponding Donaldson Thomas invariance, I mean the numerical one, should be constants. So, in terms of Donaldson Thomas invariance, in fact, uh, we don't have, 
we don't see wall crossing here. We don't have jumping. Or, or it, uh, in the in the terminology of gross and seabird, this means there is no scattering. Okay, so this is one thing. Um, Modulized space of stability conditions on some Calabria three dimensional Calabria categories. So, but it is not known. And, and then the vibration should be the one that discussed by Nago yesterday. But uh, this is not known. So, uh, you you should come up with some three three D cat. Uh, Calabria category that the modular space of the stability condition is just a disk. So this is not known. Uh, so if you find this category, then the counting, this DT invariant should be counting the semi-stable objects in the category. But here, uh, I will regard this counting. So here, in fact, the DT invariance, I can write down that. The TT invariance is just uh, so here. So I haven't discussed the DT invariance, but in fact, it should be a function from gamma to z uh, satisfying certain conditions. And here, so for each gamma, I should have a number. And here it is for plus or minus gamma e, it is 1. It is constantly 1. And then for all other, for all other gamma, which is not not plus or minus e uh, gamma e is zero, constant zero. So yes, the question, uh, the answer to the question is yes. We can maybe in this case we can regard this invariance as counting of holomorphic disk because, as I said, uh, for each of this Lagrangian, there is only one disk. So either on this side. So on this side, it is gamma e. The vanishing cycle is gamma e. On this side, the vanishing cycle is minus gamma e. So on both sides, you have 1. Sorry? No, and then what you are doing is, in fact, you are, so here, so here, I'm fixing zeta. Yeah, then you rotate zeta, and you rotate all of it. Yeah. And, OK. So. Oh, maybe I should stop here. <laughs>